Hey, it's Eric G. Around the House is sponsored by Baldwin Hardware. For 75 years, Baldwin Hardware has been known for its first class quality and craftsmanship in door and cabinetry hardware. As an alumnus of the Baldwin Hardware Design Council, I can say I have seen the details and quality from design to the finished product. If you're looking for a new style and old world craftsmanship, I can tell you there is only one Baldwin Hardware. Check out what would look great in your home at baldwinhardware.com. It's Around the House. When it comes to remodeling and renovating your home, there is a lot to know, but we got you covered. This is Around the House. When it comes to heating and cooling and everything with building science, there is one person I lean on the most, and that is Ross Trithui. Might have seen him on a little show called This Old House or Ask This Old House. We've got him here today. Thanks for joining us again on Around the House, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me, Eric. Excited to be here again. Ah, always good to see you. And you know, this space, when it comes to heating and cooling, it is a moving ball, it seems. I, I'll, I'll learn something new about something that happens. And now, months later, there's new stuff. It just seems to be there is so much technology coming out mm. that uh, it's hard to stay on top of it. I mean, I'm in this industry day in and day out. <laughs> yeah, it's always changing, you know, to that point. So even, you know, when the quote unquote experts are having, you know, difficulty keeping on top of it. But there's a lot of moving places here. You know, we've got heat pumps that are really, really taking off uh, in, in the United States, of course. But the, the cool yeah. thing about it is a lot of technology is coming from either Asia or Europe. So it's already been thought through. It's been vetted. It works. And then they bring it over to the, to the States. And then we get to basically Americanize it and kind of apply it into the houses uh, and systems that we kind of integrate with. Nice. Yeah, they're really heavy on energy standards over there, and and we're kind of getting there. Yep. But it seems like there's a lot of technology that uh, we just haven't, you know, brought across the pond. Yeah. I mean, the part of it is the, um, you know, when people ask me why is kind of the USA maybe a little bit behind the eight ball on this stuff, and part of that is because of the energy costs. You know, for a long period of time, the states have really, you know, we've been flush with energy and low cost energy, right? So our cost of electricity, yeah. you know, nationwide is I think around 16 cents a kilowatt hour. Some places are still in the like nine and 10 cents range. Some places in the 30, 35 cent range. But Europe, you know, on average has been spending around 30 to 35 cents a kilowatt hour for a long time. So when you double or sometimes triple the cost of electricity, you know, if we went to the pumps and paid $9 or $10 for a gallon, you know, which is what they pay, like people would be yeah. up in arms, like that would be crazy. And so, you know, when you pay a really high cost for fossil fuel energy or for electric energy, all of a sudden now it opens up the avenue for new technologies and for the, you know, the rebirth of heat pumps. And so we're starting to see that as energy prices are rising across the country. And so heat pumps is just, you know, a nice th way of saying, hey, let's put a magic box typically outside that heats it and cools it and gives us some domestic hot water potentially. And let's let yep. that have, you know, vapor injection, let it have an inverter compressor, let it have, uh, you know, basically a really good refrigerant in there, um, hopefully self-contained. You know, these you know, types of systems are now here um, and they continue to get better and better. So we're typically working with 410A yeah. refrigerant. That's been the, the typical refrigerant of choice. Um, R22, which is the old Freon systems, that's been phased out. Uh, but 410A is already being talked about on the chopping block to be phased yeah. out and then you know so it's opening up a whole new avenue for new refrigerants that are more efficient and more environmentally friendly so r32s nice. um r290s r744s you know so these are all new refrigerants that are coming and they all have their pros they all have their cons there's no magic box or no magic solution here but um <laughs> but they yeah. are um but it's great it's great to see yeah, and so that's going to really translate into lower heating costs and cooling costs for people uh, when they start buying into these systems because as we get more efficient, that just saves more money. Uh, as long as we've got some rebates out there that help along the way, I think it starts to become pretty cost effective. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so when you look at it, the cost of, let's say, propane, oil, or natural gas, if that's available to you, and you compare that to the cost of electricity with heat pumps, that the difference there is what I'm always interested in. Because in some cases, you know, in most cases, 
um, you know, heating with heat pumps with a COP of three or three and a half, or even geothermal heat pumps at a four or five, you know, that's 300 or 400% efficient. There's no boiler out there that can get over 100% efficient, right? The most we can get is maybe 95, yep. 96%. So, you know, we are, you know, we have a two, three, four X efficiency gain by going to heat pumps. So as long as our electric rates on a level playing field are less than, you know, uh, are going to be on a level playing field with, with gas, propane, or oil, then heat pumps will always win in that discussion. Yeah. So it's only when we have really, really cheap cost of natural gas, for example, is the only time where you might see uh, gas still be a more cost-effective option for heating buildings. But that's usually not the case. Yeah, that makes sense. And then we've got all those rebates that are out there coming out uh, across the country here in 2024, it seems. Uh, I know they were talking about it hitting 2023, but I think the states are running those out individually. But mm -hmm. uh, for some people, that could be a huge savings on heat pumps. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So most states have a heat pump incentive. A lot of the utility companies have heat pump incentives. Um, and uh, and the federal, you know, there's federal tax credits now for certain types of heat pumps. So it's um, there's definitely money to be had um, at all different levels, local, you know, state and federal level. Um, and, uh, you know, those basically get us over the hump, you know, where it might be a little bit more expensive to put a heat pump in, you know, it's a glorified air conditioner that has a reversing valve. So it's not really that much crazy, you know, in terms of, you know, infrastructure and cost. But if you can get that with a rebate from the local state and federal level, now it gets you into this new heat pump system that's going to be designed for the next 15, 20, 25 years. So that house is going to be able to reap the benefits for the next 20, 25, 30 years, you know, of its installation you know, and beyond. Yeah. And then on, on top of that, you do have a lot of great uh, things that happen outside of that, you know, by conditioning the air better inside your home and filtration and, and uh, you know, all of those things that, uh, that make your health, your house just a little bit healthier. Yeah. And think about the reduction in how many combustion byproducts you have. You know, if you don't have a gas furnace, if you don't have a gas boiler or, or wood or oil or whatever your, your heating system is, if you can get those combustion byproducts and remove them from your house altogether, now you're going to have a healthier environment, right? Because we don't have to worry about particulate matter and all the, you know, CO, carbon monoxide. We just did a segment on this house on low level carbon monoxide and the dangers that come across with that. Um, CO2 in the space, like all these things um, get infinitely better when we start to remove combustion from our homes. So, um, so you know, heat pumps, obviously with you talked about the air filtration that can be, you know, that can be added to these systems. You can add in the, you know, the magic box that heats, cools and gives you domestic hot water. Like that's, you know, a slam dunk, you know, on a lot of these projects. Um, and then, you know, one of the things that we're concerned about though, on the flip side is making sure that these heat pumps roll out effectively, right? We don't want to take an 1860s house that's poorly insulated, poorly air sealed, and then just say, oh, ma heat pumps are the magic box. Let's just throw it in there and, and off we go. That in a cold climate could be a failed uh, experiment. And so we want to yeah. make sure that we're being, um, you know, strategic about how the heat pumps are, you know, basically installed across the country, especially in cold climates where you have a heating load that could be two or three times larger than the cooling load for the building. Um, and so what we, yeah. what we talk about in our office all the time is making sure that we, these buildings consume less energy. And how do we do that? We insulate and we air seal. If we can insulate and air seal these buildings better, we're going to reduce the amount of energy that building needs, no matter what heating system or cooling system we put in it. So we consume less energy with a better envelope, and then we apply the heat pumps that are correctly sized for that project in that cold climate or that area, wherever it might be. And that's the that's Smart. really the solution, yeah. I think, to getting these buildings electrified. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And, you know, I always tell people, you know, my best advice on heating and cooling systems is your installer and installation crew is just as important as the brand that's involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great point. Great point. There's so many times they say, which one's the best? Which one's the best? Which brand should I go with, Ross? And it's like, well, it depends. You know what I mean? If you think about it, yeah. all these brands, they are very similar. They have a lot of the similar mm -hmm. features, efficiencies. Like you might say one's 0.1% higher than the other at certain rating condition in a lab. You, you hit the nail on the head. It's all about the installer. It's the installation, the proper design and installation that really makes or break an application or a house heating system, you know? And so, um, you know, ask around. I would say buyer beware. Always ask around in the local neighborhood and local community. Who are the guys that are installing heat pumps? Who are the guys that are trained from these different manufacturers? 
who are the ones that have been doing this the longest. Those are the guys or those are the teams and companies that you want to basically get behind for an installation in your house, right? It's less about brand yeah. M versus brand F versus brand D versus brand C versus brand you know D. Doesn't matter, exactly. right? You know, get it properly yep. designed, and properly installed, and you're going to have a great heat pump system. Man, that's great, yep. great advice. Ross, thanks for coming on today, brother. I appreciate it. We're out of time, but right. uh, it's always great to see you. And uh, where do people find those uh, episodes that uh, where you were just talking about, for instance? Yeah, so uh, you can find us obviously on YouTube. Um, this Little House, Ask This House, uh, the channel's there. You can find me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Facebook as well. Uh, that's at Ross Trett. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, Eric. Always great to see you. Always great, my friend. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to Around the House. Somewhere unseen and undiscovered Anywhere beyond the mean Life is a love song, let's be lovers We're all over the radio Take my hand, I know where to go All over the radio with you Hey, it's Eric G from Around the House. Are you planning a decking or siding project this year? If you are, you've got to check out my friends at Millboard. Millboard is a completely different kind of composite decking and cladding that enhances outdoor spaces with enduring distinction. Hand molded from the finest oak, it realistically mimics the natural grain and color of premium hardwood. If you're looking for something that doesn't look like plastic and instead real wood, check out millboard.com. Make sure and check out that interview we did just a few weeks back. That's millboard.com.